Yet another one bites the dust. Hi, I'm Philip Lumel. Welcome to No Uncertain Terms, the official podcast of the Turn Limits Movement for the week of September 26th, 2022. Your sanctuary from partisan politics. How many more times am I going to recycle that same headline for an episode of No Uncertain Terms? Well, probably as long as anti-tournaments politicians keep getting arrested for corruption. Is that fair? Sometimes it seems like corrupt politicians will take any stance on any issue to line their pockets, except for one issue. They always seem to oppose term limits. On this, they show heartfelt conviction. In this episode of No Uncertain Terms, we offer the latest evidence, the August indictment of former Tennessee State House Speaker Glenn Casada. Hit it. Corruption. Former Tennessee State House Speaker Glenn Casada has spent the last 20 years in the Tennessee legislature. After his arrest and indictment on 20 federal corruption charges in August, he now faces 20 years, at least, in prison, plus millions in fines. This career politician and opponent of term limits started his career as a Williamson County Commissioner in 1994 and was first elected to the State House in 1991. Gasada climbed the political ladder to become House Speaker in 2019, a job he only held for eight months before his political boat started taking on water. Gasada lost his speakership after a texting scandal involving his aide and political sidekick, Cade Cothran, who admitted to drug use in state offices and also soliciting sex from legislative interns and making other inappropriate sexual advances to female lobbyists and staff. Casada defended his friend, Catherine, and in doing so, a series of racist texts were uncovered between Casada and Catherine. Casada announced that he would discuss stepping down after he turned from a scheduled European vacation, which would allow him conveniently to continue in the meantime to collect his speaker salary, which is about three times that of the rank-and-file House members. When he finally stepped down as speaker, he held on to his seat, getting re-elected in 2020 as an incumbent. However, shortly thereafter, it was revealed that both Casada and Catherine were under investigation for far more serious charges. In August of this year, Casada and Catherine were arrested and charged with eight counts of money laundering, six counts of wire fraud, and two counts of bribery and kickbacks. Casada and Catherine had a third partner, former Representative Robin Smith, who is cooperating with authorities, and allegedly created a political consulting firm called Phoenix Solutions. The trio hid their ownership of the company in order to get approved as a state vendor. Get this, prosecutors say they created a fake person named Matthew Phoenix to serve as the face of the company, but this turned out to be an alias for Catherine. This company was used to funnel state money directly to the conspirators. Casada, by the way, is currently in office. He announced he does not intend to run again when his term ends at the end of this year. Appearing in handcuffs before a federal judge at the end of August, Casada and Catherine pleaded not guilty to all of these charges. The highest charge carries potential penalties of 20 years in prison and fines of $500,000. If convicted on all the charges, the pair could face 100 years in prison and fines up to $2.5 million. But wait, there's more. As Speaker, Casada refused to permit a vote on the Turn Limits Convention Bill. This is the resolution applying for an amendment writing convention limited to the subject of congressional term limits. Under Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution, if two-thirds of the states apply for such a convention, it must be called to consider the issue and possibly submit an amendment proposal to the states. After Casada lost his position of leadership, however, the resolution finally reached the floor for a vote in the spring of this year where it passed, 53 to 34. Casada voted no to the tournament's resolution. Casada was undone by his hubris, his arrogance, his dishonesty, 
and, until the end, clung to his sole real conviction that a politician once elected is entitled to line his pockets until the end of time. Now that the Supreme Court of North Dakota has shot down the Bismarck establishment's attempt to keep legislative tournaments off the November ballot, it is becoming quite clear why politicians chose to fight tournaments in the court instead of at the ballot box. As KX CBS News in North Dakota reports, citizens overwhelmingly support the new tournaments measure. Continuing coverage on a poll conducted on behalf of supporters of term limits for state lawmakers and the governor. It suggests a large majority of those surveyed favor those limits. Josh Many went out into the community to see if their opinions on the measure match up with the poll findings. I'm here in Bismarck in front of the North Dakota Department of Transportation on what could be one of the last warmer days before fall sets in. And I'm asking the public what their thoughts are on the term limit initiative on November's ballot. It should even be less than that, like maybe like four. I mean, Mandan resident Christopher Torres is a Marine Corps veteran. He thinks capping state lawmakers and the governor to eight years is reasonable. I think a lot of times they're just sitting in their position so long and they kind of like get corrupt, you know, get that money. And Changes them. Nicholas Huff is a private contractor who writes software for the state. He says he loves living in North Dakota, but in his home state of Hawaii, a governor who has been elected to two consecutive terms must be out of office for at least one cycle before being eligible to run again. I think term limits would be pretty healthy for democracy in general. Um, it's really easy for an incumbent to just kind of keep winning because of name recognition and all that. Uh, assuming you're term limited, it means that someone has to come up with probably new ideas every every time, or at least have the voters reaffirm that, okay, yes, even with this new person, we do want the same policies again. Bismarck resident Sarah Braun says eight years is enough time for a state lawmaker and the governor to do their job. Since if you're 70 years old, your, your hot topics in your mind aren't the same as a 25-year-old. It, it could, you know, get a little stale in the office. And she's leery of politicians who are concerned more about their approval rating than taking tough stances. Certainly do worry about corruption, um, popularity contests. Um, it shouldn't just be that you're in that office because you have a hundred friends in, in politics. Wilton resident and retired small business owner Jim Wolf fought in Vietnam from 1965 to 67. Well, I think we need a little change. It don't hurt uh, to have some change once in a while. The executive summary on North Dakota term limits done by RMG Research Group, which you can find on KXNet.com, shows that 81% of likely North Dakota voters are in favor of capping term limits for lawmakers and the governor by eight years. And as you can see today, people feel quite the same. Reporting in Bismarck for KX News, I'm Josh Many. If approved by voters, the term limits measure would make North Dakota the 37th state with term limits on its governor and the 16th state with term limits on its legislature. Thanks for joining us for another episode of No Uncertain Terms. The term limits convention bills are moving through the state legislatures. This could be a breakthrough year for the term limits movement. To check on the status of the term limits convention resolution in your state, go to termlimits.com slash take action. There, you will see if it has been introduced and where it stands in the committee process on its way to the floor vote. If there's action to take, you'll see a Take Action button by your state. Click it. This will give you the opportunity to send a message to the most relevant legislators, urging them to support the legislation. They have to know you're watching. That's turnlimits.com slash take action. If your state has already passed the Turn Limits Convention resolution or the bill's not been introduced in your state, you can still help please consider making a contribution to U.S. term limits. It is our aim to hit the reset button on the U.S. Congress, and you can help. Go to termlimits.com slash donate. Termlimits.com slash donate. Thanks. We'll be back next week. The revolution isn't being televised. 
Unfortunately, you have the No Uncertain Terms podcast.